Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Jackass Retro. My name is Matt, and today uh, we're going to be unboxing this stuff right here. This is all items I picked up on my trip to Denver, and we're actually doing this as a live stream. So uh, you might be watching this in the future, but uh, we're actually going to do this live, and there will be some people, I hope, coming into the chat. So I got uh, three big old boxes and even though i just packed this stuff up yesterday or we're well, not yesterday mon uh, sunday sunday i packed it i have uh you know it's a whole new world already so we'll s i have some memory of what i bought but you know i i go into a place and it's uh it's all a blur so I'm just going to dive right into it. So the whole trip I spent, I think, around 500 bucks. Uh, I paid another 100 or so uh, total for shipping everything back. So, you know, I'm around 600 bucks all in. But uh, I think I got some pretty good stuff. So... I'm just going to, here are the postcards. That's what I got. I got a, I paid a hundred bucks for these. We'll dump, jump into those in a little bit. Um, I'm going to get a, let's use this for our padding. Picked up a vintage Walkman. Uh, I've, so bundle did a bundle at an estate sale. They had five bucks on it. I th they think this one was half off when I got it. It's an Emerson. Uh, so it cost they had five bucks, but I think I paid two fifty on it. At the end of the day, I have to test it. Um, the battery compartment looked completely clean. Um, so not completely. I mean, mostly clean, as clean as you can expect on these. So um, what I'm going to do on a lot of this stuff is we're going to go ahead and do some live comping because I don't usually comp this stuff when I'm out there. Um, so, you know, for two fifty three bucks in, see if we can find the uh, sold and we'll share. Two. Oops. There we go. And I'll answer questions for people in the live chat. I'll probably repeat your question as I answer it. So here we go. This one's got the headphones. This is AC2103. It is sealed for like 17. It's not amazing money, but for stuff like this, I don't think really people are like looking for the model. A lot of untested, no battery cover. So I think I'm a little bit better off than most of these sellers um, if it tests out and works. So I'll probably put like 20 bucks or like 14.95 free ship. Or plus ship. And then, you know, if I hang on to it for too long, go from there. But externally, really nice condition. Uh, I love this kind of stuff. Just needs a little cleanup. This is a, a ThermoServe coffee urn. Pretty clean on the inside. I'm going to polish it up. Uh, honestly, this thing was $2.00. And that vintage, that vintage uh, kitchen items that look with the chrome has done very well for me. I've sold a lot of items this year. Um, so we're going to go thermo. Let's 
So here we go. None of them are the chrome color. Let's see if we can find one. They're all that yellowy metallic. None listed there. 161 listed. I don't see any of the chrome color. Here, let's see if I just put it in. Yeah, none, none and none. So yeah, I'll probably do like 2495-ish. Pretty happy, that'll be fine. I like this piece. This is a Williamsburg uh, Tribbett. It's copyrighted from 1950, solid brass. I'll probably, probably will polish this up. It's really nice brass Tribbett. Um, like pot size. Let's see what we got here. Eighteen bucks. These are all pretty similar. Twenty bucks here. Twenty bucks. Twenty-five. That's the one I have right here. And then what did I pay on this? I paid two dollars. So take out shipping cost. It'll probably go in a padded flat rate. Uh, not bad. Moving on. All right, I'm not gonna do the comping on these. These are pretty straightforward. Most of them are 20 and $30 games. They're all pretty good condition. I bundled these together with the laser discs. Um, so it's a bunch of PS1 games. I'll have to replace the cases. Got Crash 2, Tekken 2, Burning Road. This is not one of the good ones. Tekken 3, Fighters 95, WrestleMania the Arcade Game, Pandemonium 2, which I will have to sell as disc only, but still as disc only, that's a good $20 game. Hardcore 4x4, and NBA Jam Extreme. So a bunch of these are $20 games. There's a couple of $30 games and a couple of sub $10 games. So yeah, not, so I bundled those together with the laser disc and there was a few other things for a hundred bucks. Um, I'll make my money back probably on like three or four of the, yeah, these are all PS1 games. So, and they're all pretty good condition. Um, I avoided the ones that were pretty thrashed. Um, here's a nice, uh, super cool. This is bra solid brass. I'm guessing probably English, probably late 1900s. It's not a repop for sure. Uh, nice water. You were, you know, um, we can look up antique brass pitcher. And I mean, you know, here's one kind of like this. This one went for 47. And if we look up with a different go Ewer, you know, we're probably in the 30s, 40s, 50s, somewhere in that neighborhood. This is probably the closest to what I got, although mine is a little bit more rusticated. Here's a nice one here. I've sold ones like this before. You know, you, you kind of can't go wrong anytime you got like solid brass and copper items. So yeah, easy 20 bucks. Yeah. Maybe, maybe more, 
30 bucks maybe. Then I picked up this at an estate sale. And like I said, you guys know that I've got a soft spot for Chrome. Uh, I do have the, it's probably in one of these other boxes, but check this out. This is a Handy Hot 4602 Chrome Waffle Iron. It's actually really clean for how old it is. It works. I tested it. Um, and then all it's attached to that. So that's all as the unit is. So, uh, let's see here. Handy hot 4602. And I think we'll probably have to go to worth point on this, but Oh, here's one up there for 50 bucks. So yeah, this is the estate sale that I went to that I met the lady who ended up selling me the postcards. So everything that I got at that estate sale, I paid $100 even for. This is just my laptop that I shipped back to myself so I didn't have to carry it through an airport. So yeah, and it's got the cord. It's just going to probably take maybe three minutes to clean up and it's good to sell. Next, all right. So, this one, this has got some cool stuff. I'm kind of excited on some of this. I picked up some postcards at an antique mall. Uh, basically paid a buck a piece, pretty much. Some of them were 50 cents. Um, this is the church, or sorry, Powder Box Church in Jer Jerome, Arizona. 35 cents on that one. Uh, this is the Church of the New Jerusalem in San Francisco. I have never heard of or seen a postcard for that. So that one was 50, 50 cents. Uh, this is the Pan Fork Encampment, which this was 50 cents. And it's, I can't tell if it's old, how old it is. I think it's might, it's not a divide, it's undivided on the back, but I don't think it's that old. I think it might be a more modern chromish type postcard, although I can see the dots from the printing process. I honestly, I don't know. Then, um, uh, the cowboy on his horse. I got two of these. They were 75 cents a piece. I do pretty well on those. This one was interesting. So it's a rodeo and a cowboy scene with the white stripe. Like there's supposed to be something here, right? It says like the state or the location where it is but it doesn't say it. Um, it says here that it's the publisher's Pikes Peak Litho. So I'm guessing it's probably some rodeo in Colorado. I honestly, I don't know. Um, found these, these are some interesting military themed poem and patriotic postcards. There's like five of these and they all have a different poem on them. Um, this one is his sweetheart, a soldier boy in khaki come to bid his last farewell. He is going to the trenches and history will tell. He leaves behind a sweetheart where old glory stands unfurled. 
Sure, the girl leaves him, uh, leaves behind him, is the best girl in the world. So, got like they're all similar to that. They were, I've never seen those before, so I figured, yeah, give them a shot. They were a buck a piece. Uh, this one's pretty cool. It is the excursion boat Silvergate in San Diego, California, with some people water skiing next to it. That kind of stuff always does pretty good. Uh, the Underwood Springs Main Casino. Generally speaking, casinos are always good. Um, Scotty's Castle and Guest House. Um, I think this is in also Phoenix. Or no, this is Pomona. I'm sorry. Real Photo, I think. Uh, Epic... Arizona Native American on the horse thing. Uh, this was kind of a neat one. This is a, it's a fold out advertising postcard. And it's. Hot water by wire. And this is for a hot point automatic electric water heater. So, you know, it's got a little bit of meh on there, but still cool. I like it. And then I got a stack of real photos, and they're all sort of like um, swimming scenes, and they're all from the same out. Al- they're obviously pulled out of the same album. They were only a buck a piece. And I thought, you know, there's enough here. That I can either put them together as a collection or single them out. Um, so there's a f- cool like fishing boat. Here's a guy looks like he's digging for clams. Here's some people just taking a ride. This one is It's of a railroad bridge, and I bet I could probably figure out what bridge that is. Nice picnicking scene, real photo. Here's some people at the beach. These two usually seem to do pretty good. There's another, like, picnicking. Here's some kids playing in the surf, as if undertow is not a thing. Here's another like uh, picnic. We got a little, little bit of the antique automobile there in the background as well. Hanging out at the campfire. Some more stuff at the beach. Everyone looking very, very serious at some sort of meal. Um, I'm pretty sure this is Denver City Park and Lake. That looks like the Denver Capitol building. And the um, it, being that it came from the same collection, that actually helps me figure out the location on some of this stuff. But... Not the ocean stuff, obviously. Some more. There's some. They did like a little photo shoot sitting on a big stack of logs. Some more camping. This dude, look out. Look at that guy. Hey, baby. Here's one guy coming out of his tent smoking a pipe. Kind of cool. Here's some more folks at the beach. And then some more folks at the beach. And then, what do you know? Some more folks at the beach. So, you know, none of these are like write home about kind of postcards, but 
Uh, I spent under a hundred dollars total at the antique mall for everything that I got. And there's a few items uh, we'll get to in a minute that will put me in the profit on their own. I will probably single some of these out and then put some of them in collections. Oh, those were, those were real photo postcards. All right. This stuff I'm pretty excited about. I bought all these patches. This was $5. Um, and if uh, Jake is in here, he might want to step to the front of the class. So these are, I think, all Air Force. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So he, this is a, actually a sticker, but it's a longbow Apache sticker that probably I can sell on its own. Then this is uh, the Titan Astro Titan team, but it's got Astro from the Jetsons on it. This is an Air Force patch. As is this one. Uh, Go Bud, King of the Mountain, Team Titan at Cape Canaveral. I can't believe I paid only $5, like a buck a patch, basically is what this came out to. And then this one, again, Titan Team, Cape Canaveral, Florida, with Bart Simpson, Rocket Man. Get it? Rocket Man? Uh, the postcards did not come from Brass Armadillo. They came from... Um, Denver, they were an antique mall. Um, came from uh, Heirlooms Antique Mall in Denver. And then finally, uh, the small ICBM Martin Marietta patch. Like these are. I couldn't find comps on any of these. I think I'm going to do really, really well on those. Uh, let's see here. I picked up a bar of old soap for $2. The Lux toiletry soap. Probably, probably make like 10 bucks on that. It's got some label issues, but it's not used. I don't think. This was the item that's going to make all of my money back. I'm going to go full screen on this. This is, she had on here 1950s, $14. It's actually not 1950s because, well, I mean, if you look at this, you can already know it's not. It's from 1976 for, for Bicentennial. This is, I can't believe I got this for 14 bucks. A huge wall poster map of Disneyland. Uh, the comp, th this, this is a hundred percent sell through. Hundred percent sell through all day long, no problem. It's in fantastic condition. It it looks like it was just bought and stored, as it was bought. Uh, the. Well, let's let's take a look real quick at the comps. We're gonna go to Worth Point on this one. And that price on there is in pencil, so it'll come right off. Okay, here's the worth point. Oh, I gotta sign in. I mean, this is the same map. These are signed, by the way. Mine is not signed. 
Here's probably closer to what I can expect. This just sold in April for 176. Uh, 135, 129, 100 and whatever, 122. I'm probably going to put mine up for 200 bucks plus shipping. I'm not even going to put offers on it. And I'm almost 100% sure that it'll sell within 90 days. There are none available at le when I when I checked. And let's see. I'm going to put this here. Give me one second here. I still have this to go through too, but we'll do that in a moment. What else did I get? Um, this was... They had 10 bucks on it, but I didn't pay. This is part of a bundle. This is the Game Boy Carry On. Old school, like you put the Game Boy in there with your games here. Pretty cool. Uh, this came from one of the one of the estate sales. It's just a nice leather wallet. This is just some weird photos that came out of a different thing that I got. I don't know what I'm going to do with those, but uh, this came, I got a PlayStation. Uh, I, this was bundled with a bunch of other stuff. I got uh, Spyro in there. So extra little bonus. Got some toys for the cats. Hey, Buster. You want a banana? Vaseline glass frog. These things are like 15, 20 bucks all day, sometimes more. Got me a vintage Furby. They had 15 bucks on it, but that's not what I paid. This is the true vintage one, not the... This is the 1999... Furby. More cat stuff. Uh, Radica Lighted Solitaire. Paid two bucks on that one. I think it works. Don't know, actually. <laughs> I picked this up for a dollar. I just, uh, it was terrible and I couldn't resist. This is actually going to my Burning Man camp whenever Burning Man happens again. All right, we're getting some good stuff now. Um, oh, what did I just do with that stupid ring? The ring, oh, here it is, goes to the Made in Italy uh, alabaster egg. These things are, they sell all the time. They're easy to sell. I think, I think this is pretty much a throw in at one of the estate sales. All right. So those in a second this here is a countertop shelf uh, display for Schaefer's pens for like Schaefer fountain pens Schaefer fountain pen collectors are enthusiastic collectors we'll put it that way uh, you're not going to find any of these on eBay but we'll show you what they are doing on what they've done on worth point and i'll tell you what i got them for and oops that was some really crappy uh 
have to change that. I think there was one, actually there was one sold on eBay. Spelling it right? No, I'm not. That's why. Here it is. So I got two of these, exact same thing. I paid $2 a piece and uh, I had them in a pile and uh, the person who like a person came up to my pile and tried to grab them. Uh, and I was like, no, 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 it's my pile. So I got that one and something here in here smells like cigarettes. And the second one, I'm probably going to put these up because they don't come up very often. That that one on Worth Point was 2016. And for a pen collector, uh, these things are awesome. Or 2017. Uh, there might have been one more sold comp. 51, 51, yeah, in 2017, two, two of them sold for 51 bucks. But none are available right now. I'll probably go like 124.95, make offer plus shipping. So for two bucks a piece, heck yeah. Hi, Buster Wiley. Having fun with their new toys. All right, because I was in Colorado, uh, obviously can't do it without finding some cores stuff. So these, I got three of these. They're all basically the same. I paid two bucks each on these. They're like vintage cores ashtrays, but uh, ceramic or porcelain maybe. Uh, yeah, so not bad. Those were a hundred dollar bundle. A couple of other uh, Radica Solitaire and Radica uh, Super Vintage Electronic Backgammon. And again, Three bucks on these was what they have, but that's not what I paid. I need to put new batteries in them. No, but they're both... Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. These things are... are not huge money makers, but consistent sellers, in my experience. More toys! Another toy. This one's got. This is a not an air freshener. That's not a cat toy. That's an air freshener. Um, <laughs> can you hear all the? Yeah. Uh, this is just all to the PlayStation. Got all the cords and all that stuff. Memory card, controller. Picked up a nice wood jigsaw puzzle. 
It's all there. I paid 22 bucks. I'll, I'll probably double my money is my thought. I don't know for sure, but I think probably that came from the antique mall. Uh, same booth that I picked up the, the Disney map. Um, so when I was there, I, uh, was there with a friend and, uh, picked up, we picked up a, uh, two drawer file cabinet that is, lives in Colorado still, but in it, we found these. So 1976 Wyoming with the state logo matching, uh, license plates. So I, they're like fantastic condition. Um, I think they sort of hit them in this this uh, file cabinet and forgot about them. So I'll probably, I mean, maybe I'll just send them to Commonwealth Picker or something, but I'll probably sell them. Anything else? The rest of this is just cat stuff. Picked up a... So one of the estate sales, it was a, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, old pharmacy that had closed down and they just put everything in storage. I would have liked to have bought a lot more stuff, but it was the first day of the sale and there was just so much stuff there. It would have also been really expensive. They had old telephone equipment. Like it was really one of those places I love to dig into. Um, but I did get some of the stuff that was easier for me to ship home. Um, I need to clean this up a little bit, but it's an old Pepto-Bismol advertising display. And this, this they literally just threw in for me. So I, I got nothing into that now. And then these all came from the flea market. Let me move this stuff aside. Uh, I just, it was a pile of die cuts. I paid a dollar a piece. This stuff actually does pretty well. Easter, but then, and another one, and they're, these two are flocked. But then the, that one, buck a piece. So 10 bucks for all of them. Uh, I'll probably sell these off mostly like 14, 15 a piece. They're not Bastille, which is a good one to look out for, but. They're still pretty good. Got another Halloween one there. Another one here. Um, pretty sure they are vintage. I'll have to do a little more research. We got a crafty raccoon. And then the the witch. So for a buck a piece, even if I ended up lotting up the Halloween ones, I should easily like double or triple my money, I think. And then the big one. Let's not cut ourselves. This is for me. It's not a buy. So we're we're not including it, but it's a little um, old school uh, cart. which 
maybe you guys will see it all put together when it's done. Here's the core to the waffle iron. All right. So let's see here. I picked up a few. So there was. These are just cases and manuals. These got bundled in with the PS1 games. Um, with the exception of The Simpsons, which is disc only. So I'll sell these off, no problem. NFL Street 3 and uh, Guilty Gear Judgment. And unfortunately, these are all missing the discs. But uh, they were essentially throw ins. The guy at the antique or the uh, flea market didn't give them any value. All right. Then I picked up this super cool old school. This is Bakelite. The clock works. Oh, the clock works. The radio doesn't. But it powers on. And I'm pretty. Or it's, this one isn't Bakelite. The other one is going to be Bakelite. It's probably just a tube, is my guess. Um, because when I plug it in, the, the clock turns on um the radio does not so uh this came from the uh antique mall uh, we got a little bit of a boo-boo here i don't remember if that was me or not but there we go uh even just parts only it'll be fine it'll do fine oh yeah there's the there's the dial it looks like it this cracked off or it was already cracked and came off and that's okay because this one wasn't the, the really good one anyways this one I am super stoked about this one is fully functional this is a Ward's airline radio Totally working, works great. All this, all these little scuffs and things, I can get off the vast majority of that with a magic eraser and just a little bit of soap and water. And let's see if we can do another test of it here. Make sure it survived the journey. It takes a minute to warm these up. Justin would never do this. My light is, that's my light, not the thing. There we go. Come on, stay on. There we are. All right. Hear that? That hum. Una perspectiva bíblica. Los últimos acontecimientos ocurridos en el mundo so this is picking up AM. And it's got shortwave on here as well. So yeah. Pretty cool. Old school radios. I like selling. They're pretty neat. So this, both radios, the waffle iron, uh, 
the Schaefer pen things, the Pepto Bismo advertising. Um, and then we got a, a old school bottle of uh, old school bottle of uh, Evan Williams whiskey that was still sealed with a tax seal on it. Uh, but we broke that tax seal. We drank some of the whiskey. Because I can't sell it. Uh, I picked up, this is from another estate sale, a Nintendo DS. And this was, I don't know, one of the, the blue ones are pretty good. I know that. So, turned on, everything looked good. So, got the case. That was in a bundle. What else is left here? Old school advertising thermometer. This kind of stuff is always fun, pretty easy to sell and ship, so. And then, whoa. More cat stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, this, the battery compartment's pretty bad on this, but this was the th a throw in with the laser discs. It's a, the um, mini disc player. I have no idea if this thing's going to work. I kind of doubt it. But even for as a parts unit, I should do okay on it. Yeah. I mean, we'll find out. I have my doubts. Oh, and there's a disc in there. Cool, so I can test it. More kitty toys. Oh yeah, Here, this was a throw in as well with the radios. Nice echo egg beater. These are like, you know, 20 ish bucks shipped. All right. Now, this, I'm going to have to do a little work on these. I got a bag and board them. So I paid $9. There's just a bag. And all it said was, 60s baseball posters sealed up in a plastic bag price was nine dollars nine bucks that's it uh i didn't open the bag i bought these blind um just on like it's one of those things where i it had the two things two big clues which was 60s baseball it was a be, uh posters right how how am i going to go wrong on 60s postcards uh or 60s uh baseball posters especially for nine bucks right she also had written on there Mickey Mantle uh, and a bunch of other stars that I've heard of. And it wasn't until I got them that I started looking through them and figuring out what they were. These are the inserts. So here's Frank Robinson. Obviously, conditions are not perfect, but... You know, for $9, I paid for all of these. This, look at that. So we've got, here's the here's the money, y'all. Go check this out. You can do your own research on this one. Mickey Mantle. This is Topps Chewing Gum Poster. <coughs> Pardon me, I believe the 1968 series. There's no way I'm going to get less than 100 bucks on this. On this one. 
just the one. The paper on these is a little flimsy. So the, and these were not, these were tacked up on kids' walls, right? They're not that common. Gary Peters, this one's a little better condition. For $9, I, I couldn't believe it. Here's, these are from a, a different year. I think these are 1970, but here's Johnny Bench. Frank Howard. Max Alvis. Rusty Staub. This got a tape repair, but like for some of the common ones, I'll probably just put them up at like 15 bucks make offer and I'll make all my money back on the first one that sells. We already did Max Alvis. I might have doubles. Here's another Frank Howard. This one is 1971, I think. Don Drysdale. Willie Mays. Like, yes, there's this one's damaged, but Orlando Cepeda, Serpeda. <clears throat> Another Lou Brock. And then finally, Jim Lonberg. So yeah, pleased as punch about that pickup. And then what other goodies we got in here? Okay, just a couple more things, and then we'll jump into the postcards. Then be done. What's your time? Fifty-two minutes. Perfect. Old school irons. These have always done well. This one actually has the maker on it, which is the Geneva, Illinois. Number six iron, not like amazing money, but I think I paid two bucks for it. So toys. Yeah. And that's it for this, for this one. So, uh, let me just set this stuff aside, put these here for now. What else is in here? It's just this, right? Just that. Oh, I <laughs> uh, got this for 25 cents. Christmas right around the corner. Uh, Kim, for the way that I do my pictures for posters, it's actually really straightforward. I have a poster frame that still has the glass in it. And I just roll them out. I lay down the glass over over the poster so it has it stays completely flat. And then I just uh, make sure that I don't have a light glare, and then take my pictures. So it works out really well. And what's this? This just making sure I got it all out of here. More kitty toys. Here. Want this? Uh, 
he they're in heaven. And this will get broken down at a later time. All right. Postcards. So these are the ones I picked up on a dark street in suburban Denver late at night, buying blind. I, you know, I don't need to worry about maintaining the bag. I want to maintain the postcards. So it was a lot of holiday stuff, which is fine. I don't mind. I like holiday stuff. Holidays are coming around. But some standard like Thanksgiving. Got uh, entrance to the University of Nebraska College of Architecture. Bunch of really cool like pioneer style postcards. They're all black and white. These are divided back era. Meeker at Chimney Rock. Badlands. Uh, here's the side, the slide at Sherman Park in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I've actually sold similar card to this before, and I remember it being pretty good. South Point of Scotts Bluff. North Platte. So these are all kind of in a series. And then we got a, uh, oh, here's another one. A lot of these North Platte Valley. And then tons of Christmas ones. So good red Santa. Kids with a snowman. Like this stuff is pretty much all day long here we got a nice little cute valentine silver bells really cool another very cool christmas one patriotic christmas got the christmas fourth of july mashup uh this is not a postcard it is a die cut valentine's that I think is handmade, that is a pop-out. It's, or pop-up, I should say. It pops up like that. It's seen better days, but those, I know, are do quite well. A little creepy kid at Christmas. This one I like to call Deep Breather Santa. Ho, ho, ho. What are you listening? What are you? Are you, are you wearing a... Uh, are you wearing a Christmas outfit? Ho, ho, ho. Creeper Santa. And here it is. My first ever found in the wild Halloween postcard. Do do do. Jack Lantern, Black Cat, Halloween. Hooray! Finally. Uh, this is a. Uh, sort of a postcard book, but not really. It's the Post Office Bookstore in Washington, Kansas. Normally, I don't do the postcard books. This is a more of a fold-out postcard than it is a book. And it's not like one of those, you know, linen souvenirs. So this one I know is from a series. I forget the series name, but... Uh, there's, I mean, there's some of these are just not non-remarkable. 
scenic sort of things. There's a, what is this? Kind of these, the location doesn't, isn't that special, but whenever you have like a skyline that, that notes the names of the buildings, those are usually do pretty well. So this is uh, Peoria, Illinois, the post office courthouse from Monroe Street to and Hamilton Boulevard. And it's got the names of all the buildings along the top there. Uh, I mean, Kim, I don't think there's etiquette. If, if you are currently the owner of whatever it is, it's up to you what you want to do with it. I tend to agree with Popeye. I usually will not cut them up, but I'll most likely I'll keep them together. But honestly, it's up to you. Here's one from my neck of the woods and one that you actually, I don't see very often. This is Yakima, Washington from the Northern Pacific Railroad. So really cool street view. Pretty uncommon to find these even where I live. So I'm pretty excited to find that. Um, got a real photo of the high school in Mankato, Kansas. Really cool. This came out of that same. Yeah, I agree with Popeye that it's unlikely they'll sell. This book is a little bit different, though. Commercial Street in Emporia, Kansas. We've got... The Campanile of the Daniels and Fischl, Fisher Tower, uh, 16th Street, Denver, Colorado, with the Military March. I'm uh, pretty sure that one will sell easily. Linen Postcard of uh, Burrard Lake, British Columbia. Meh. Uh, night view of City Park Lake and Pavilion in Denver. It's a really nice one. 1919. I expect that to do well. I, I do really well with Denver City Park. So. This one's nice. Just a nice embossed Christmas. You know, Bell's Cabin. Blah, blah, blah. You guys who, you, who, it's got all the keywords. It's got all the Christmas keywords. I, and in generally, I occur, I agree with Popeye. Nice um, motto postcards. I, I, I like these motto ones. I don't know why they're so simple. But this one's, you know, 1913 posted. Here's the uh, cathedral spires in Yosemite. Yosemite is always good. Here's a Pledge of Allegiance flag with a backwards flag. <laughs> I know it's not backwards, but I, I always feel like it should go right, left to right. Uh, sanitarium in Butte Creek, Michigan. Any, like... Sanitariums, hospitals, no brainer. Uh, this is, it says the lake, but I'm not sure. Here on this lake. Oh, it's just whatever. Washington, Kansas. So we've got some kids in the water. Real photo. Puget Sound, the Golden Hour Sunset, again, my neck of the woods. Seeing as I live on Puget Sound. And then a nice real photo with a crease and a cut of a horse and buggy. Florida Orange Grove. Uh, 
Here's the Grand Junction Colorado water wheel. Water wheels are another one that I really like. This is cool. This is the uh, an advertising for the Easter sunrise service at Garden of the Gods in Colorado. Uh, Cameron, I don't eat fish. Because it's disgusting and it tastes like fish. Giant cactus in Arizona. These always do pretty good. Kootenay Bay, real photo postcard of the can't read the name of the ship but i can zoom in and figure out get a magnifying glass out generic little chickies christmas christmas chicks not easter chicks unless they're talking about season's greetings of easter which is weird um this looks like, oh, this is a photo. This is not a postcard. Some sort of smelter. Here's one of those Dutch racist cartoons. Christmas greetings. I will give her a sounding sweet. I guess back then it was fun, it was fun to stereo stereotype the Dutch. Here, oh, here's another one. Accept these Easter greetings, will you? Here's one of those high relief embossed with an, uh, not even, that's not, it's an applique rose. The velvet rose applique. Yeah, we're doing a an, an flipping sports guy. Did you see the posters? You'll have to go back and watch. Like 20, 1978, or sorry, 1968, 1970 tops posters, the pack inserts that I got for nine bucks, including Mickey Mantle. Here's like a uh, large letter greetings with the Floral large letter. Hearty greetings from Morrowtown, Kansas. That's where the uh, high school real photo is. This little card is just to say all happiness on Easter Day. Here's a... Uh, I like these scroll greeting ones too. They sell okay. My greetings on you this birthday. And then you have the same kind of thing. Accept my hearty congratulations. Best wishes. Uh, here's the uh, Colorado Loop on the Union Pacific Railway. Here is a real photo postcard. This is the, uh, I've sold these before. These are Byron Harmon real photo postcards along the Canadian Pacific Railroad. So we got some bighorn sheep. They're not big money, but they've, they've sold for me pretty well. The Byron Harmon ones, I just, I know enough. Um, there was some unique stuff in there. This one is... Come Terry Go for the 33rd anniversary. This, I'm not, this is, I, I don't think a postcard because it's made to be displayed. It's got the thing on the back there. But from 1924, said, uh, yeah, I'll have to do a little bit of research on this, but it's super cool. Uh, Another Santa. This one's not as creepy, but still doesn't, not going to help me sleep at all. Let's see if we can, there we go. Just a really nice sort of um, Art Nouveau 
style. That one's real pretty. It's like spring nymph kind of thing. Here we got a, another red Santa. And then more creepy Santas. Look at this one. This Santa is like, there's something I have not told you. I'm not wearing any pants. Uh, where is this? This is interior of something. I'm not sure. It's in it's in German on the back, so it's probably like the inside of a bank or museum or restaurant or something. Hotel, maybe. It's kind of cool coloring. Some kids sledding. Creepy looking special needs kid just got all his toys. This one almost looks like a Norman Rockwell thing. This is a oh, it's a successful farming company. So probably a magazine insert says two is company, three is a crowd. Here's a, uh, just a field of some wheat. <laughs> there's, a cute, there's some cute kitties in there. Another racist Dutch one. Just ya come and make nice nups hit me. What the hell? Yeah, I know. I'm. Don't worry. That Art Nouveau one, I will be researching. I think it's awesome. Like, what does that say? Kostya, come and make a nice makeup. Mint me. How is that not offensive to somebody who's Dutch? Uh, I wish the best Christmas to another kid with uh, stocking. These, are, these, I mean, for Christmas stuff, this is good. Oh, and we're back with the creepy Santas. Santa with the scroll. Uh, is that weird eyes on the cat? Maybe. I'll research it. Some more of these uh, North Platte Valley. I mean, I feel like I did pretty good. Here's a winch back. Merry Christmas. You guys don't. Okay, let me pull it back out again. Yeah, the eyes do look a little funny. I'll do a little research on that one too. Another big old turkey. These shells can do okay. I don't what I don't understand is why somebody bought a big clam shell in the middle of America. Got a large letter greeting from Albany, New York. Got real photo postcard of Friends Church in Argonia, Kansas, 1909. Uh, Central College, McPherson, Kansas. All of these are like our Colorado, Kansas, pretty much every single card. So for the stuff that isn't clearly identifiable, this one is artist signed and I can't make it out. Francis Brownridge, maybe? Oh, yeah. 
getting old. Francis Brundage, my mistake. Valentine, Valentine one where she's busting out. I know these are good. It's not great condition, but Manitou Springs. And then check out the size of this muff. These always do good. Another Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, giant muff. People like the giant muffs. Uh, here, the kids have decided to turn the tide and creep on Santa. It's from 1922. Sort of a Norman Rockwelly thing. Got, uh, this is a, I know this is a rotograph. I've had this other one from the series. Or wait, it's not my mistake. This is a Rochester photo. Yeah, I had my lines crossed, but these little like real photographs. <laughs> Chimney Rock, Wisconsin Dells. The here's this one's a weird Easter one. Explain this one to me. Why is that sheep in an egg? Like, obviously exaggerated egg. Why is it just the weird head of a sheep in there? Why? I don't get it. I don't even understand. Some more Kansas, Union Church, Garden City, Lithochrome. Here's a nice sort of night-ish view of the uh, gateway to the Garden of the Gods. Hey, we've talked about this one before. There's the state capital of New York, Albany. Um, this is a... What's the name of it? Um, whatever that city in Kansas is that we've been looking at, but another real photo of the high school there. A little bit newer one. Here's the post office in Arkansas City. I mean, a lot like post office. These are all easy. City Hall, Portland, Oregon, that's sepia view, PNC. Can't really, there you get a little bit more sepia there. Uh, here is Central Academy and College, McPherson, Kansas. Nice divided back in the nice, here we go. This is from 1915. It, it looks like it was sent out to people there. The Centralian, an annual devoted to the interest of Central College, contains 88 pages. Size, 8 by 10, descriptive matter of various societies and classes. Over 50 cuts, bound with a silk cord. Ready May 15. Number limited. Respond quickly. Cash with order. Price 85 cents. Post paid. All about the college. Address McPherson, Kansas. So obviously a advertising postcard for McPherson College sent out to get people to buy their annual yearbook in 1915. Kind of cool. Here's a nice interior of the um, Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco, Chrome, kind of a out of place one with the from the rest of it. But I knew right away as like I have sold so many Fairmont Hotel postcards and I've been there many times. They've got one of the best tiki bars in the country. Oh, another racist Dutch one. If you some letters don't write, I will have a few words met you. Uh, nice. Is this real photo? It's you. It's in the Great Britain. Um, it's the Ludgate Circus, but all, all kinds of cool old advertising there. 1923. I've, I recognize this one. I either have another one of it or I've sold it. And then guess what? Of 
Creepy Santa. How am I supposed to have a happy Christmas if that guy's staring at me? Mommy, he smells like bourbon. This is a good one. All aboard seeing Denver on an old sightseeing bus. This is 1923. I, I expect this one to do pretty well. Here's one of those high relief uh, airbrushed uh, embossed ones. Birthday greetings with a rose and a couple of pears. It's like uh, a vagina and two testicles. Here's some altar boys on Easter with a third altar boy disembodied head off to the right. Thanksgiving. Oh, not creepy Santa. A good old jolly happy Santa with a big bag and some toys. Heading down to the village where he will start his murdering spree. Some another North Platte Valley. Oklahoma Coliseum. Uh, this one's nice. The uh, nice automobiling with a big hat. A pleasant journey. Nineteen nineteen, so pretty early in the days of the automobiling. Blah. Flowers, flowers. Too bad about this one. Somebody, somebody probably cut that out to put their photo in it. Like, I am in North Plath Plath Valley. New Year's, New Year's, flower, flower, thrashed, 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 flower, flower, thrashed, thrashed, flower, flower. Maybe not in that order. Not a postcard. Flowers, Christmas, boat. Flowers, flowers. All right. Clocking in at a little under 90 minutes. This one's got a... Oh, I didn't even notice that Christmas seal for 1923. Cool. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, I'll do some research on them. Uh, Don, you know, they, they'll sell. They just take time. The British ones. I've, I've sold a few. They're not the, the hottest commodity. Honestly, I do better with, uh, like, for me, overseas, um, maybe not the most valuable, but I do best with Norway. Um, and... It may be because I list all my Norway cards because there's I find them a lot here and I've done well with them. So it's one of those like Pavlovian things. Hey, whenever I list a Norway postcard, they seem to sell. So, so they get listed. So that is going to be that. I thank you all very much for watching. I got some listing to do. Um, so we will catch you on the next one. I'll be back shipping in the morning. And if it's your first time here, you're watching in the future, don't forget to like, subscribe, blah, 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 all those things. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.